program is sponsored in part by Turkish Cultural Foundation, Amity Helal Meat and Grocery, Bistro Med, and Auto Century. The Turkish American Scientists and Scholars Association, TASA, is an independent, non-profit and non-political organization established in June 2004 in Washington, D.C. The first annual conference of TASA took place in Washington, D.C. in February 2005, and it was very well attended. Ambassador of the Republic of Turkey, His Excellency Faruk Loğlu was the honorary speaker and he presented the unique Turkish-American relations. Former Deputy Prime Minister of Turkey, Professor Erdal Ünenü, was the keynote speaker and presented the development of science in the Republic of Turkey since 1923. Great pleasure to be here to address you on this occasion. I wish many years of successful activity to TASA, from which scholars and scientists and simple people, both in the United States and Turkey, will profit. It's an overwhelming uh, responsibility uh, because it's a new beginning and implementation, as we have been discussing this morning, is the key. Uh, human resource issues are the key. We have so many ideas, brand new uh, approaches and innovations, but implementation and uh, the key people to do them with will be the major issue for the future. Levent Yanek, the executive director and also one of the founding members of TASA, talked about the mission of TASA. TASA's mission is to promote educational, scientific and technological cooperations between U.S. and Turkey and to facilitate the advancement of science through scientific exchange, educational programs and increased networking. from the second annual conference of Turkish American Scholars and Scientists Association from Philadelphia. Today we will be visiting with very prominent scientists and scholars that reside in United States and Turkey and we will ask them questions, their impressions about this conference and also the goals they've set for the future of these collaborations between Turkish American scientists and scholars. The theme of the conference is innovation and benefit to the society. Would you like to make some remarks about this? The sessions are very good with these themes as we have seen. Yeah, we were thinking of uh, creating a theme for a conference to sort of focus the discussions and uh, the panel topics, etc. And when you look at the role of the institutions like ours, uh, the higher education society expects a number of things. One of them, of course, is to get the manpower, the human uh, resources to the society to carry out certain tasks. But the other element is actually to lead discoveries, new ideas, innovations that eventually will benefit uh, uh, the society and our daily lives. So we thought that this time not only focusing on the human resource element that's producing technical uh, and competent talent, but also to come up with discoveries and ideas that the societies will benefit around the world. So uh, that helped us to focus uh, and identify the uh, panels and the panelists and the topics. And I think it was a very good idea and it's going extremely well. We are very pleased with the, with the participation. Now we have Dr. Banu Onaral, who is the director of Drexel University's Biomedical Engineering, Science and Health System. Welcome. First, I'd like to ask you uh, about this conference and also the theme of the conference is innovation and benefit to the society. Could you please make some remarks about the theme and also your activities here in Drexel or your collaborations in Turkey? Thank you very much, Semat, for this opportunity. Uh, the theme of the, this conference is very close to my heart. Uh, I have dedicated 
a large portion of my own career to make sure that the discoveries that we, may in, we make in our laboratories uh, eventually translate to practice and it serves the end user, especially in healthcare, in our case, of course, healthcare and the quality of life is our mission. So therefore, this conference is very much central to my thinking and also my thinking for the next academic uh, uh, generation. Uh, I believe that in the future, uh, the universities will not only just develop knowledge and communicate this knowledge to the next generation, but they will also assume the role of bringing the innovations that happen in their labs to practice very rapidly. So there is a service to society, this benefit to society, which will also be part of an academic's uh, lifestyle and also uh, mission. Meetings of this sort give the opportunity not only to learn from each other as what everybody's working on, but it also forms, it establishes an environment where we can develop new relations, new programs, new initiatives. Many of you are leaders of your respective institutions. We at Drexel try very hard to interact with institutions in Turkey, not only to bring students from Turkey to here, but also we send students to Turkey to gain experience, a new vision, to interact, and of course visit one of the most beautiful countries on the face of Earth. I hope uh, this meeting will accomplish establishing some new relations that we will cherish for the years to come. And I thank you very much for joining us. I wish you a very enjoyable meeting. Have a great day. Ambassador of the Turkish Republic, His Excellency Navi Şensoy was the first honorary speaker. Well-known entrepreneur and technologist Dr. Kenan Şahin was the second honorary speaker. Both of them presented the unique role of Turkey in the new geopolitical order. The keynote speaker, Professor Müket Yetiş, the acting president of the Turkish Scientific and Technological Research Council, gave the message that Turkey had 24,000 scientists and researchers in year 2002, and the goal is to increase this number to 40,000 by 2010. There were 300 attendees and over 100 plenary talks and poster presentations. Several Turkish students received research grants and presented their projects during the poster sessions. An interesting poster presentation and discussion was on the topic of reverse globalization. Turkish entrepreneurs have established over 40 businesses, predominantly diners and restaurants, in the eastern shore of Maryland. Over 90% of these entrepreneurs come from the same region of Turkey. This region is Yalıdere, and many of them are distant relatives. Throughout the conference, many productive research collaborations between scientists in U.S. and Turkey were featured. Right now with us we have Dr. Üstün Ergüder, the former president of Boğaziçi University. What do you think about your university and your university's collaborations with American Turkish scientists in the United States? I think this is something that has to be pushed because when I was back at Boğaziçi University, I attended the first ATAS conferences back in 1992 with the purpose of establishing a link, a bridge between the two countries. And universities should play a very important role in that, in establishing that link. Of course, organization here is very important too. But what is missing is, is that bridge. And I think we have a very good chance of building that bridge now and various designated institutions could play a very important role. I think there are lots of challenges because new engineering and scientist jobs are coming out or opportunities. Uh, would you like to make any remarks about workforce development? Talented, skilled engineers and scientists. I think we already, I think Turkey is uh, has a gift in terms of human capital. Although it's not very widespread. But I think we have very talented and well-trained scientists in Turkey and abroad. But I think there's a key problem that where we fail. That is organizing, working together, creating synergies to uh, maximize 
the potential that this human capital has. Right now we have Dr. Selim Ünlü, professor from uh, Boston University. And today earlier he chaired the session on bio nanotechnology, which is a very, very important session. What do you think, what is important for Turkey in this field? Is there anything specific that's so unique for Turkey? Um, for every new opportunity, uh, there is an opportunity for uh, every new field, there's an opportunity for um, new research initiatives. And if we look at well-established research areas, it is rather difficult for a country like Turkey to um, start a competitive high-impact research program. And since this is a, a very um, new area, and it's innovation-driven as opposed to be a facility or establishment-driven, uh, I think there will be more opportunities for uh, Turkish scientists. That's the uh, direction I see where we can make an impact in collaboration with Turkish scientists. In terms of specific research areas, um, genetics, for example, is an important area because uh, the, not only impacts um, human life or disease uh, identification, but also textiles, for example. So there will be um, significant contributions along those lines. As I understand, Turkey needs new to, uh, 20,000 scientists and scholars. <laughs> the numbers we saw earlier today right. from the president of uh, Tubitak. Yes. And do you think in nano technology and also in applications in biology, not uh, bio nanotechnology, mm -hmm. is that an area where we should focus in having new students in that field? I believe that will be a, a good important area to focus. Um, a, the one way to generate a new generation of uh, scientists would be providing scholarships and if there is a directed effort towards uh, a specific area in nanotechnology or nanobiotechnology I think it will help to generate a cadre of students which will become tomorrow's professors in Turkey. Uh, the problem I see in Turkey is that um, there is not much motivation for people to go into um, advanced graduate studies because there, there are no positions available for them to, uh, um, as a, for jobs outside universities and only a few places under Tubitak. The, uh, uh, the uh, Marmara Research Center is the only place that hires PhDs. So I think it will be, um, it will be interesting to generate all these new scientists without any job positions. I think we, we have to generate the jobs and the scientists will, will come. And we noticed lots of collaborations with Turkish scientists, lots of Turkish students being trained. Yes. And it seems you're going to form uh, some bridges. Yes. And so what are the new unique things, you, do you think, from that group? With TASA, mm -hmm. uh, there has been one meeting already in November in uh, to see the facilities in Istanbul, where we met with scientists and uh, researchers uh, under the Tubitak structure and uh, you know Turkish scientists from US and there will be a second meeting at the end of May and uh, I will also participate in that workshop the goal is to uh, put together programs where Turkish scientists are participating in uh, research activities that are directly linked to um, research activities in the US so Tubitak has actually uh, is, is quite willing to provide funds for these kind of activities and uh, Dr. Yetish indicated that um, they would like to see at least two or three new programs, uh, some university programs and some also um, so-called TARAL projects and those are university industry jointly uh, larger programs put together as part of these uh, result of these workshops. So that is the new thing. I mean there is availability of funds is very important and this is quite new for um, Turkish scientists and and trying to put this into a program is also uh, new sure. um, there is more strategy defined and um, they would like to see uh, the research activities in Turkey to have more global impact as opposed to just local impact sure. they would like to see that the results are um, embraced by the rest of the community and what we can bring in as uh, Turkish scientists working in the United States uh, is 
probably a little bit of a, a vision to help out with the uh, increased impact of these programs. And in terms of Turkish students, we are blessed as Turkish scientists here because we can attract the top quality Turkish students. We can understand their credentials a lot better. And um, I've also had uh, something like seven or eight Turkish PhD students so far, and they've all been very successful. Um, but most of the students who come to the United States uh, stay after their doctoral degrees. We would like to also generate Turkish PhDs who would be more willing to and more interested in um, working in Turkish institutions. So there has to be job creation in Turkey. Two distinguished professors, Professor Mehmet Sarukaya from University of Washington and Professor Hür Köşer from Yale University. They were the speakers for the bio nanotechnology session and I'd like to hear your opinions. How was the session and what do you think? What is the future for us, the Turkish American scientists? Uh, what was interesting for me was to listen to the other two colleagues uh, whom I knew from their publications but now I saw them face to face and therefore uh, I see uh, well they are doing a uh, state of the art research it's very possible that uh, we will be doing some collaborative research in the United States we hope that uh, we will be able to bring uh, scientists and uh, students from Turkey and do research uh, with them as well. We had Dr. Ibrahim Kemen who presented his views about earthquakes and he did a wonderful comparison of the faults in Turkey, earthquake faults in Turkey and United States. Your presentation was very informative with the comparison you did for the Turkish earthquake faults Mm -hmm. zones and also the ones in the United States and um, towards the end there were very good stimulating questions and you also mentioned that there has to be some collaborations between Turkey and United States especially to understand the Turkish land that mm -hmm. was the message I heard and would you like to elaborate on that? Sure. As I said in my talk uh, we have a large project in the US called Earthscope. Uh, the idea of Earthscope is basically image uh, Western U.S., what we call Western U.S. crust, where all the discontinuities are taking place, and uh, those discontinuities, which we also call uh, faults, are causing uh, large uh, earthquakes in the Western U.S., such as uh, San Andreas, and then there's also other faults in the Basin and Ranch province. So I thought we need a similar project in Turkey to image you know, the crust in Turkey. Uh, because we have those large discontinuities, not Anatolian fault zone, it's Anatolian fault zone, and the faults of the Western Anatolia, they are capable of uh, producing large earthquakes. With the experience that we gain uh, from the Earth scope, we can carry it to uh, what we sometimes call uh, informally a uh, uh, Turkish scope project. And then uh, the, uh, eventually those two projects can collaborate. Uh, we can learn uh, from Turkish scope project for uh, the U.S. Earth Scope project in uh, imaging the Western U.S. crust and, and vice versa. So we collaborate because uh, in the uh, U.S. we are far ahead of, uh, of this uh, project and we know what to do. I'm thinking that the expertise uh, from uh, Turkish American scientists and American scientists can be uh, carried to uh, Turkey to start out that project and, and produce something uh, fruitful and meaningful. Definitely. It's so important to share the knowledge gained in one nation or one country with the other one. Absolutely. And especially um, the theme of this conference is innovation and benefit to the society. Yes. I think benefit to the society is very important, especially in your field. Absolutely. Uh, earthquakes are very big societal uh, problems. Uh, they are natural uh, disasters and when they happen, they cause large damages, so we have to eventually do something about it. We, we, we haven't been uh, really, I guess when we look at the history, the geology is, first of all, geology is a young science, and the earthquake science is even younger, uh, therefore there hasn't been much attempt uh, to predict earthquakes. When I was in, uh, in college, even in, when I was in Penn State as, uh, in the PhD program 25 years ago, the idea was that uh, earthquake cannot be predicted, forget about it. 
But now, after 20 years, we know more about uh, geology, we know more about rocks, we know more about the materials and uh, all those imaging especially, all those computational uh, signs that come into uh, as a basically a basic, a basic sign uh, than we use in every uh, science. And then that way, it's now time to think about how we can predict earthquake because we know more. We have a lot more knowledge uh, in geology and other sciences now. I think that's, uh, that, that's, that's, that's why we can think about earthquake prediction. And earthquake engineering is very interdisciplinary. Yes. Field, oh, it? yes. Earthquake engineering is very important because we have to build our uh, uh, constructions to withstand a large earthquakes. We have Dr. Ahmed Yildiz from University of California, San Francisco. He was one of the speakers earlier today. I'd like to learn what is the long-term impact of your research area? Yes, um, I mean, we did a few different things in our research. First of all, we have established a new technique that we can get nanometer precision by using very small probes, sensors. Yeah. So that, sens that technique can be used in almost all fields almost for all fields of uh, cell biology so that we can look at the proteins and DNA and enzymes within the cell and we can see what they are doing with a great precision. So that's going to dramatically increase our knowledge in biology and there will be so many uh, applications will be coming out for human health, from human health to nanotechnology and from, our, from the theoretical point of view. So. First of all, we want to extend our applications based on this technique to a functional level so that we are going to understand the reasons of uh, illnesses. Because if there is something happening to these proteins, uh, especially in neurological problems, including Alzheimer, Parkinson, paralysis, neuroblastoma, uh, nerve system cancer, and deafness, uh, blindness, and stuff like that. So it causes very serious diseases. And right now, we don't know why these diseases happen when there is something happening to these motor proteins. If we can link, if we can fill this uh, gap between the, uh, the outcome and the beginning, so if we can understand the mechanism and the linkage, then we can basically produce much more effective uh, cures for these illnesses. And other than that, we can make, you know, nanotechnology is a new emerging science and people are starting to talk about nanomachines. Can we make nanometer, nanometer uh, scale machines that can walk in our cells, can kill the tumor regions? <coughs> so there is already nanomachines in our cells. So we can understand those machines, modify them for ours, control them, and do, the, do work within a body and out of the cell. Now we have Ms. Özge Kaplan from North Carolina State University. She's a recipient of the Young Research Grant. And we'd like to learn what the topic of your research was and your poster. Uh, my research topic is looking at soil waste management alternatives and strategies. And the project was done, it's a case study for State of Delaware. And hopefully these strategies will help them, the state, to make a decision on how to handle the waste generated throughout the whole state. And what do you major in? Uh, I'm in civil engineering and then my concentration is water resource and environmental engineering. And where did you graduate from in Turkey? Uh, I graduated from Middle East Technical University in 1999. So you've been here for a while, yes. six years. Yeah, since 1999 I'm here. <laughs> there will be future collaborations between scientists that meet here and would you like to talk about future collaborations or anything that your university, Drexel University, has as uh, collaborations with Turkey or other countries even? Uh, yes indeed uh, because uh, as I pointed out in my, in my opening talk one of the reasons for these kind of conferences is not only to learn what other people are doing through their presentations and speeches, but also to explore and develop new ideas, new collaborative opportunities, and new initiatives, and carry it on further. Now, added to that, of course, our role is not only to do things on our own, but also to nurture young 
generations, younger people, and uh, lead them and streamline their activities into a productive future. So uh, what we are doing in part of this meeting is explore new ways and venues uh, for new exchange programs, how to send some of our students to Turkey and to other countries, and how to bring some of their students into this country to have some, to gain some experience. We are very active. In fact, Drexel has uh, uh, a student at least uh, one uh, every quarter, every term in Turkey. We deal quite a bit with Middle East Technical University. Uh, we had a couple of students doing co-op in Turkey. In fact, this morning I spent quite a bit of time to create new opportunities for the co-op opportunities and semester abroad opportunities for some of our students. And then, of course, Turkey is a very popular, it's a beautiful country and a popular place for holding conferences, meetings. There are a number of them every year. And we encourage participation in those meetings and we send scientists, some of our faculty, some of our students, to gain not only technical expertise, but also gain, gain exposure to a different and wonderful country and a wonderful culture. So what was the topic of your research and your poster presentation? Uh, in general, I am working on machine learning algorithms. Uh, with machine learning algorithms, we are trying to make computers and machine act and think and learn like human beings. Uh, just we are trying to make computers to learn from the data in the environment that are around them and to use this information that they learned for the future coming data so that they can behave like humans. Right now we have Ms. Gamze Güles from North Carolina State University. She's a recipient of the Young Researcher Grant. So we'd like to learn what your topic was, what is your research area. I'm from Environmental Engineering Department and participated in this uh, event with two posters. One is uh, for my master research, it's completed last year. It's about wastewater treatment uh, microbiology and uh, activated sludge bulking problem. And the second one is for salt waste management. It's mostly policy and management study for my PhD work. Okay. So this study is mainly for United States or other countries or Turkey. Uh, Can you do some comparison? Uh, both of them are done for here. Uh, the wastewater uh, part is we use the samples from North Carolina uh, and it's basically for here but it's a comparison of uh, some molecular methods and also some microscopic tools so it's applicable to everywhere. It's not region specific actually. But the other solid waste management project, it, we're doing it for or Wake County, that's where the city is located. Uh, but it's possible to apply this model to Turkey, actually that's one of my plans for future years. We are also very keen for the undergraduate level education to be held in a different way, which is called as by us, uh, project-oriented student-centered system in which we have uh, some projects assigned even starting from the first year on to the students so they, to motivate them for the coming courses. These are, we have a very nice location just at the coast of AGNC and have a huge campus area and we have also started a techno park in our campus. These are the main things related to our university. Do, did you start building any collaborations with universities in the United States? Actually, we are looking for future collaborations. Already we have some collaborations going on uh, among our faculties and well-known United States universities. I have forgotten to mention that most our, of our faculty are from well-known universities of United States. They got B.S. degrees in Turkey and Ph.D. degrees from state. And for example, in chemical engineering, we have uh, faculty coming from Penn State, UCLA, Michigan, Ann Arbor. And our young faculty having Ph.D. degrees from these universities have some collaborative research projects going on. Actually, this is the second year that I am participating to that TASA meetings. It is quite fruitful and it is good for having some collaborations between Turkish universities and U.S. universities 
in the near future. Thank you very much. We have Dr. Tunjaj Özgen, the president of Hacettepe University. He is also representing Turkish higher education. First, I'd like to hear about your impressions about the conference. Well, I must say that this is, I'm very satisfied. I'm very happy that I'm here. Indeed, the organizers, which I ought to thank very much, they did a wonderful job. This should have been done, I believe, by the Turkish universities, universities before. I wonder why we didn't, we didn't even thought of something, but this may stimulate that I was speaking with the other rectors. Uh, it is, it is a, just a big chance for me also to come here and to meet many of the graduates of even my universities and, and, and all the other universities and when we heard from that they have some problems, a lot of so that is a wonderful and, and the agenda, I mean the, the curriculum is excellent. Does your university have lots of collaborations with U.S. universities or overseas? Well, yes, we have we have a lot of uh, contacts with the U.S. and the European community uh, universities. Indeed, we are running a dual diploma program with SUNY or the SUNY of the New York State University. We, we, I don't know how much you know about Hacettepe University. Hacettepe University is the, on the list the, as the fifth biggest university of Turkey. So we are covering all the scientific field. So each department, each sector has different links with different universities in, in the U.S. As a whole country, we are planning to have 2% uh, of GDP for allocated for research uh, purposes. So in order to use that much uh, research money, we need more researchers. And actually, it is very nice to be here and to see that there are too many young Turks who are uh, getting uh, experience on collaborative works. Uh, we need that one, that uh, type of uh, collaboration very much, actually. So uh, we would like to increase the collaborative works with the American scientists here. And not only in the graduate uh, works and on research uh, area, but we have some good uh, progress in uh, undergraduate programs. Uh, we are carrying out together with uh, American institutions like State University of New York. Actually, we have nine programs. We are uh, paying too much attention on that programs. Students from Turkey are coming here spending some time and they are completing their work in Turkey so they are getting the right of having dual diplomas. Now uh, we are expecting some American students to come over uh, in one of our programs to attend and get their degrees again from ITU and from uh, their uh, institution here. So uh, the uh, collaboration uh, and the cooperative works, the complementary works uh, we have with the uh, American universities and institutions are getting bigger and bigger. And we, ha we are in contact with uh, some other uh, American institutions as well, in addition to the State University of New York, like Montana State University, we have a connection with them. And we are trying to increase the uh, other connections uh, with other inst institutions in America. My university in the part of the, in the, near the Mediterranean coast in Sparta and uh, also uh, my university approximately 45,000 students, uh, 12 faculty and uh, four institute and, and approximately is 30 research centers. All these translational research projects and activities you have to grow and everything happened in a very, uh, very fast, actually, under your leadership. When you're committed and if you're a missionary, of course, you're going to put all your efforts in actually demonstrate it, that that's demonstrating that that's quite feasible, that what happens in our laboratories can very rapidly uh, move into uh, healthcare and benefit patients, benefit quality of life. Therefore, uh, it was just for me almost uh, part of my purpose in life 
So that's why everything that happened, maybe it was too much work, maybe there were too many obstacles, whatever. I just don't mind because at the end, uh, the mission is that matters. And it's not so much my personal uh, comfort or ease uh, of life or anything like that. You have lots of graduate students and undergraduate students coming from Turkey. Very Would true. Would you like to talk about your Turkey? Yeah, students? we have excellent students. We are very, very pleased with uh, our students who are coming from various universities. They are absolutely a delight to work with, brilliant, charming, uh, hardworking, uh, good friends, uh, good colleagues, probably they will become excellent academics. Some of them will go to industry. Many of them are very entrepreneurial. So it's a joy, truly, to, to be able to be part of their life, to mentor them. You know how I am. I really would like to see the young generation to be successful and productive. So. And what are your ideas and your thoughts about the future of education in Turkey? And tomorrow you have a session called New Visions for Education in Turkey. Would you like to give us that? Sure. Uh, in Turkey, we have a very young population. We have an amazing power in our young people. And that power will realize if we truly commit ourselves to a mobilization. And I call this an academic mobilization or an educational mobilization. So I very much like to see that that mobilization starts. And that mobilization truly helps us uh, rise to our potential. Because I think we have enormous potential in the global market. In the global innovations market, academic market, uh, in the global economy, we certainly will assert ourselves, but we first have to have this edu educational mobilization. Guy Sagai from Izmir exhibited 17 of his paintings, which complemented the technical nature of the conference. Bu tavus kuşu, tavus tavus kuşu tüyü ve hanımı sembol sembolize eder. Yani öyle bir şey var mitolojide. Bu da hoş sohbet yani. İki bardak olması paylaşımcı olduğumuzu yani. E, ferdi yaşamıyoruz yani Amerika'da olduğu gibi. <gülüyor> evet.